Hey everybody, welcome to this week's podcast. I want to talk about trust and trust is not trusting in general, but once I'm, I'm noticing the emergence of a theme among women who have decided to just take a break from dating being in a relationship so that they can actually do some inner work. Now, if you if you are familiar with my work, what I really try and focus on and work with are the women who are highly sensitive, um, they're empathic, and they absorb other people's energy. We are so attuned um, I, I include myself in this, this group of people, um, but we are so attuned to the needs of others that we absorb their energy, we anticipate uh, people's needs, and sometimes for before they even understand, the other person even understands what their needs are. And we try and save people. I, I kind of have a, an issue with the whole concept of wanting to save other people. I don't know that we consciously think that we are trying to save somebody. I think it looks more like we want to help people. We're, we're bright, shiny beings that are here to help people, to help them better their lives. Oftentimes we can, we can see um, potential in other people that, that they may not see in themselves. So whether you want to call it saving or are having relationships that are projects so that we can fix them, I, I, I don't see it in that perspective anymore. I used to, I, I'm not of that opinion anymore. I really feel that it's important, you know, as, as being highly empathic and being highly sensitive that what we really want to do is we, we have so much love and compassion and empathy for people that we really want to help them and we want to help better their lives. The challenge becomes that there are no boundaries around our empathic abilities, which to me, it's a superpower. And uh, you can watch back on some previous videos and blog posts that I've done on the reason why I believe um, that being empathic and, and highly sensitive is actually our superpower. So, but what happens again is that if we never learn to have boundaries around our superpower, we end up sacrificing ourselves uh, to help other people. And it leaves us um, disconnecting from who we are, uh, losing our, our sense of, of self. Um, we, we end up sacrificing time, money, energy, you know, the dark side of that is, um, you know, becoming a martyr, you know, we, we have a, um, an expectation that if we give this, that, that there is going to be something reciprocated to us that, that, you know, if we give this love out, we're going to get that love in return. And I think that oftentimes we find that, that that's not the case. So, but what I want to talk about in this um, episode is that the, the issue of once, once you have done the inner work, you have done some shadow work, you have, you, you see what it is that you have been doing and how you have allowed yourself to be treated in relationships, how you might even sabotage some of your relationships, which, which seems like um, quite a strange dichotomy given that, you know, you want to help people and yet we, we, we may even have a tendency to uh, sabotage the relationships. I'll do another podcast on that in the future. But once once you take a step back, take a time out from dating, do some inner healing. And now you're at that place where you want to get out there and you want to start dating. And a theme that I've been hearing lately is 
I'm really happy being single, yet I really would like to explore what's out there and perhaps start dating, yet I don't trust myself that I won't find myself in in an, a relationship that uh, will get me to that that same place again. So that's what I'm talking about in this this particular uh, podcast is the whole issue of being able to to trust yourself again. So you know when you're ready to get back out into the dating world where you feel quite grounded. Um, in where you are in your your life. If you look at the legs of a table, they provide a solid foundation and a solid framework for you. From that place, you you get this sense of of personal empowerment, um, feeling good about who you are and what you're doing in your life. And you have reconnected with your own creative expression. You've regained um, some self-confidence and some self-esteem. And you actually see yourself from a different perspective. And from that place, you now go out into the world and you start presenting yourself as this Um, healed butterfly who may have been in a cocoon for a year or or two two years you're now ready to emerge you have a new voice you have um, a presence about you you have creative expression and you really feel good about who you are that is a really strong indicator that your heart now is open to attracting somebody that matches you vibrationally. Now here comes the trust factor. The one thing I want to say first of all is that when you have done this depth of inner work and you get to that place of what I've just described, you are not even going to attract the lower vibrational people that you once did because you've actually shifted your energy. You've shifted how you see yourself, um, your, your value, how you want to be treated. You've created um, a framework, a new framework to build a relationship upon. And that new framework is at a higher vibration where you're going to now connect with people who are going to see you for who you are. So that is that is one thing that I want to say about being able to trust that you're not going to attract the same type of person because of how you see yourself. If you look back at how you saw yourself and who you were in those past relationships, and you look at who you've evolved into, you'll see that there's exponential growth in what you now feel you're you're willing to not settle for. I was going to say what you would settle for, but I, I actually quickly changed that to say what you are no longer going to settle for. And as you look for a new relationship, you're very easily going to be able to see the, the commonality in the types of people that you're attracting to you, you're going to recognize old patterns. And you're going to be able to easily say, I recognize that. And that's not for me anymore. And I just want to say that I'm actually in the same boat as as the listeners uh, listening to this, because I have myself have gone through a transformation over the past few years where I'm just now getting out into the dating scene and I'm actually recognizing old patterns. And although I haven't experienced 
what this this new type, this new quality relationship. It's it hasn't presented itself to me. I'm still single. I'm still out there dating, but I I do easily see old patterns of of people that I have dated. So let me give you an example um, of one date that I went on. Uh, we had um, a really great connection. I met him at a coffee shop. I actually asked him if he wanted to get together for coffee and he agreed to coffee. We kind of went tag back and forth to confirm a date. We finally settled on a day. We went for a beautiful dinner. We had a lot of connections and a lot of things. Um, you can, you can tell a lot of things about a person by what they don't say just as much as, um, what they what they do say so the ability to read between the lines the the vagueness the um the aloofness that they might have um so that was one of my experiences as we were having a conversation we had great conversation it flowed throughout the entire dinner he was a, a gentleman. He responded quickly to text messages. That was all wonderful. But there was something about his um, mannerisms that led me to think that there was unfinished business um, elsewhere in his life, loose ends that had not been tied up. I don't know what it was. I certainly didn't press him for the details, but this is this is a thing. This is the the trust factor. Um, there, I felt that there was there was something that was not in in full expression of him during the date. I did agree to a second date and the second date kept on being put off. We would, we would make a date to get together. And then the morning of that date, it, uh, he would, he would cancel. I didn't actually take that personally, but for me, it just was a very clear indicator that there, he had something unfinished, um, in his life that made him not ready to um, move on to the next date, although there was an interest there. And you can tell if somebody's interest in you, interested in you just by their, their, their mannerisms, their engagement, you, you can use your intuition and you, you know if somebody is into you after some conversation and getting together and the text messages that you have back and forth. So I just listened to my intuition and I just, you know, let him go, set him free. And I didn't pursue him. I didn't, you know, every time he, he broke the date off the morning of, I didn't, you know, fall into my old patterns of, oh, I recognize this, this person as needing my help. There's something going on in, in his life and maybe I can help him. And, you know, oftentimes um, without those boundaries in place and that level of um, self evolution, you know, we want to um, insert ourselves into somebody's life, even though they're not ready for us to be there. So that's what I mean by things that that are not said during conversations, trusting your intuition, and not um, inserting yourself in into their lives or, or coming from a place of needing to have this person in our lives, just because there was a connection there and trusting how you're, how you're feeling, even though you can't actually put words to it. So as you're going through this process of getting out there and dating again, it is a really good idea to step back and have an awareness of, 
of the old patterns. And like I said, you won't attract the same type of person to you anymore because you have an awareness of what those common characteristics were. So if you like this, um, go ahead, comment, let me know what's going on in your life. Let me know what challenges that you are having as you get back out into the dating world, where you're um, at in your healing process. Healing doesn't just happen overnight. Um, it doesn't happen even over three months. It can. Um, so, but there's different levels and different processes that you go through. So I'd love to hear where you're at and how I can support you moving forward. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you on the next podcast.